All right, so obviously there's going to be a lot of questions if the Warriors lose the finals. Um, and it's going to be interesting finals. I don't got my pick yet, so um, I'll announce it soon. But um, yeah, let's see the possible scenarios if the Warriors actually if the Warriors lose the finals. So let's check it out. First of all, let me start off this video by saying I told you so. So spam out the eggplants for these fine gentlemen who doubted my Celtics. Just spam them out. Take the L. Now I did lose all my hope myself. I mean, how could it be the game too? Just but shut I up. Hope, and I believed that the Celtics were not going to get swept before the series started while everyone from the start thought it was going to be a sweep. The second the Celtics won game seven against Washington, but it didn't. Look, Celtics still aren't going to win the series as a whole, and mm -hmm. Isaiah being traded will definitely be discussed on this channel at a different time. But the Celtics have already Why exceeded all, trade all my Isaiah, expectations though? from them this season. That's all I wanted. But with that being said, I, I just wanted to get that off my chest. And uh, let's get right into the meat of this video. So I think even after Game 3, we all expect the Cavs and the Warriors to meet in the finals. And I feel like a majority of people are actually still picking the Warriors, and I get that. I mean, they had a 3-1 lead on the Cavs last year. I don't think they're going to blow that again. And now they have a perennial MVP candidate on their team in Kevin Durant. In some people's eyes, the second best player in the world, only next to LeBron. And especially after Game 3... I know people are still going to say, even though it's not really a valid point, that the Warriors are going to sweep a team that is better than the Celtics even without Kawhi. While the Cavs lost to a team at home without their best player, thus proving that the Warriors are just that much better. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. People hold on, 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 hold on. So after one game, one game, and y'all want to doubt my team? Really? After one game? Really? Alright, alright. You know what? It's, it's cool. Alright. To say it, but time and time again, LeBron has proven and reminded us that you simply cannot count out a team with him on that team. Mm -hmm. Let's just say for the sake of this video, the Cavs win. What happens to the Warriors after that? Because check it out. Steph Curry and Kevin Durant are free agents this offseason. Okay. Draymond Green is locked in for three more years. Okay. Clay Thompson is locked in for two. If okay. the Warriors win, I believe there's no reason for them to leave. But if they lose, I'm not too sure. And also, just looking at their financial situation, Ian Clark, Andrea Gudala, JaVale McGee, Zaza Pachulia, David West, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant, and Sean Livingston are all set to hit free agency this summer. That's mm -hmm. literally their whole playing rotation except for Clay and Draymond that could potentially be free agents this offseason because I know Kevin Durant has a player option. And I believe he will opt out to get that bigger contract. And I don't know about you, but I'm almost 70% positive that Ian Clark, Sean Livingston, Andre Gudala, and JaVale McGee will get better offers from other teams. Yeah. And considering how much of a problem depth is already for them, and considering the fact that we're assuming that they lost to the Cavs, the Warriors may have to go a different route and go back to valuing depth over star power. Because if you can't beat the Cavs with the team you have right now, plus the fact that your relatively non-existent bench is going to be depleted even more, the Warriors may have to pass up on offering one of either Steph or KD a max deal in order to have a deeper all-around roster. Because again, check it out. The teams that gave LeBron the biggest problems throughout history or just outright beat LeBron... We're not the most star-studded teams. You go all the way back to 2011. The Mavs didn't have a second All-Star. All they had was basically Dirk. But because their team was so deep and diverse, that is what made them beat LeBron on top of LeBron choking. Then you look at 2013 and 2014. The Spurs pushed the Heat to seven games in 2013 and won in 2014 in five games. But both times, they were not the most stacked team in the West. That would go to the Clippers and the Thunder in terms of star power. But because they were so deep and well coached, that is why they gave LeBron so much trouble. And even in 2015 and 2016, the Warriors didn't beat the Cavs because they had more stars, but because exactly. they had more depth. Well, in 2015, they low-key did 
because Kyrie and K Love was out. But exactly. at the end of the day, even if LeBron didn't have Kyrie and K Love, he would have won that year if he faced any other team besides Golden State because of the fact that they had multiple bodies to throw at him in, in Iguodala and Clay and Draymond. You know what teams didn't give LeBron trouble? The 2012 Thunder, who definitely yeah. had more star power than the Heat at the time, but wasn't deep. The Pacers, who, yes, pushed LeBron to seven games at one time, at the end of the day were not deep enough. The Hawks in 2015, not only <laughs> did they lack star power to compete with LeBron, they had such a weak bench. So if I'm Golden State and I lose to Cleveland again, you have to be able to see this pattern that winning against LeBron isn't just about having more firepower. It's about having strong firepower at a consistent rate for 48 minutes. And if the Warriors try to re-sign KD and Curry, they're definitely going to give Curry the Supermax of $35 million a year. And KD something close to $25 million on top of Draymond and Clay, who are earning around $17 million each and are locked in for at least two more years. So that's going to be a total of around or near a hundred million of your cap spent on four players for at least the next two years like it's as if the warriors have no choice but to thin out their bench and if they lose to the Cavs again this year why would they think they'd win next year with the same team except without a bench again all of this does not matter if the warriors do win because i feel like curry would be more willing to take a pay cut and durant might as well and so will the others but if they lose and some of them feel like they're just playing a lost cause at this point. Who knows? Maybe one of them leaves. And it really isn't out of the realm of possibility. If LeBron can leave the Cavs, if KD can leave the Thunder, if LeBron left the Heat to go back to the Cavs, what's stopping Steph Curry from leaving? Or KD from leaving again? Or even going back to OKC at that point? Or to some <laughs> other team that have the depth to be LeBron? Oh, no. 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 KD... They don't want you back there, Midbride. You are banned from OKC. Like, you can't go back I'm there. I'm saying the Celtics look pretty You might as well go to LA or something. IT. I, you know, yeah, we added Mark L too. Just saying KD. Just saying. Or Washington. I don't know that why I think KD that these don't want to go to Washington. want to leave Golden State because if they had the option to, even after losing to the Cavs, I feel like they would all resign to give it one more go. I think if it ever comes down to this point, it has to be the Warriors management not giving one of either Steph or KD a contract to sign in the first place so that they can deepen their team. Because I'm just saying, it's barely deep right now. They had so much trouble making it deep this year with Curry making $11 million a year. Just imagine how hard it's going to be when Curry gets a $24 million raise and KD gets a slightly bigger contract as well. And if the Warriors ever do this, I'm not too sure which one they'll let go, either KD or Steph. Because oh, man, Steph that's would have the bigger contract, and KD is technically, I guess, a better player than Curry overall. But yeah. with Curry, he's also proven that he can lead a team to a championship in 2015. And in 2016, even though he lost, he still led them there. But with KD, the last time he led a team to the finals was five years ago. So I don't know. I'd, I'd probably lean towards letting go of Steph because of how big his contract is and the money you could use if you don't sign him. But it would definitely still hurt a lot because you can't replace Curry's worth to Golden State. That's like yeah. trading away D. Wade in his prime for Miami. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And hopefully you guys start thinking about the Warriors offseason because... I mean, he's he brought up some good points. Um, the Warriors are a dangerous team. Um, and Cleveland's going to have to bring everything. But the Cavaliers, they got their, um, their bench is better than the Warriors. If the Cavaliers bench can show up, then we can win the game, actually win the series. So we'll see what happens. Thank you guys for watching. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe. And yeah, guys, peace.